Hey everybody out there. Today the modification we're going to show for our daisies are uh, how to create a completely bridged uh, metal receiver assembly. So this metal receiver assembly is just the two halves and what I'm demonstrating here is that it's completely solid and locked together. Uh, you may question why you'd want to do this. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the metal receiver guns, it's not uncommon to see a separation in the two receiver halves. And uh, this can be aggravated by attaching a scope. And the reason for that is your dovetail is only uh, contained on the right receiver. So it does not uh, attach to the left hand receiver whatsoever. So the scope rings, when you clamp them down on the dovetail, can put pressure between the two receiver halves and actually cause some separation here. What the issue is with that is these two receiver halves are only attached to the gun uh, at two points on the stamped metal frame and then one larger rear uh, attachment bolt which helps uh, hold the two receiver halves together in the, in the rear about midway up uh, and it also helps to clamp the, the butt stock. And again, on the other half of the receiver, you still just have the two screws that are attached to the stamped metal frame. The issue with that is these stamped metal frames are, uh, while they're, they're very rigid along the longitudinal axes, they're not super rigid uh, in torsion, especially uh, where the valve body is contained. It's, you can see they're very flexible. Well, that flex is not only on the end, because uh, the valve body helps contain the flex uh, toward the in, inside of the gun, but it doesn't help any flex toward the outward direction. So when you have this uh, receiver attached to the gun, you've already got pressure on the dovetail from the scope clamps pushing or torquing that right receiver half outward. And there's not, you can see the flex there. There's not a lot to keep that contained other than your receiver. So again, you can get a lot of play there. When I say a lot, it's relative. Even a couple three thousandths or more would have a huge impact on your point of impact uh, for your scope. And over time, leaning the gun against the scope, leaning the gun against the wall, bumping the gun, resting your arm on it when you're hunting, any of that can put pressure on that receiver half. And again, the only thing really holding it together is that rear screw and this aluminum frame, which this aluminum frame is not going to take a lot of torsion. So one thing that can help that is if we box this frame in. Like this, with just these two three millimeter bridge screws, this, this assembly is locked very tight. So on the 880s, what I use is two aluminum standoffs threaded for three millimeter. I'll include a link in the comments to the exact standoffs I use, but I believe they're four millimeter diameter, 16 millimeter in length, threaded for three millimeter screws. And we use uh, three millimeter panhead screws, one on each side, threaded into that standoff. And it really makes this very solid. And uh, the benefit of that is, once it's assembled onto the gun, it also helps add rigidity to the frame. Because now you've basically boxed in uh, the rear part of the frame. So all this flexible portion of the frame is now held rigid by the two screws on either receiver half and the fact that the receiver is boxed. So now, instead of the receiver relying on the frame to hold it closed, the frame is now relying on the receiver, if you will, and it's keeping it clamped and closed. So that should help your accuracy over time from your point of impact shifting. It, it can't help uh, the group size either. I mean, it can't hurt the group size either. It should do nothing but help because there's going to be less variability from shot to shot due to flex in the frame. To install the clamps, we've got to drill one side of the receiver. We want to drill in the top front corner and the back rear corner. You can see these holes through the receiver. I've already drilled these to demonstrate where we want to drill the holes. 
Now you can see the bolt is laying in the receiver in its normal position when assembled. The reason I put it in here is because if you look at the bolt, there'll be a rail just above the bolt. This is the bolt guide rail. We do not want any part of the clamp to protrude below that guide rail or it'll interfere with the bolt slide. So we have to use our three millimeter drill bit to drill through the receiver above that rail, but also keep in mind the diameter of the aluminum standoff that will also be installed. So a good, a good point of reference is take your aluminum standoff and place it in the receiver and verify where you're going to drill. Uh, the center of that standoff is still going to be completely above that rail because the standoff's four millimeters in diameter, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, of course, the bolt that we're going to use is a three millimeter bolt. So it's so tight that the standoff may protrude below the top of that rail, which is okay, but it cannot extend below the bottom of that rail. We've got to keep the standoff above the bottom of that bolt slide rail. So it's important that when you drill this back hole, we place it high enough that the standoff will not protrude again below uh, the bottom of that slide rail. The front's a little bit easier, but what we've got to keep in mind, that's why we place the uh, valve body and barrel assembly in the frame and attach that to this uh, one half of the receiver is to make sure when we drill this front hole that the standoff will not uh, interfere with the barrel. So just like we did for the bolt slide, we want to place the standoff in that corner, making sure it's not pushing down on the barrel uh, where, we, where we drill the hole. So once we drill those two holes, we can remove the frame assembly, remove this bolt, and we'll take the two receiver halves, place them together. Oops, excuse my hitting the camera. You'll flip it over and you'll use the two holes you drilled first from the inside as guides for drilling the other half of the receiver. So we'll take our drill and our drill bit and we'll insert the drill bit in the existing holes to drill through uh, the second receiver. Now you don't have to drill all the way through with the two receiver halves assembled. If you place your drill bit in the existing hole, drill just a bit, then that will mark where your hole needs to be on the other receiver. You can do that for both front and back, remove the previously drilled receiver and then finish the holes from the inside on the other receiver. Now this one already has the standoffs assembled onto it. So once we're done with that, we assemble the gun as normal. And then once we've got the gun assembled, we can install our other screws in these two holes and have a completely bridged and locked uh, receiver assembly. That, I've done that on several guns. Uh, one of our next videos is going to be uh, this gun, which has been covered in a couple different posts on Daisy Gate on GTA forums. Uh, this is kind of one of my test bed guns. I made a metal pump arm for the, it's a 1977. I also made an aluminum bolt block, which utilizes uh, one of Ron's uh, brass probes, and I made a, a metal bolt handle for it. Also, I went ahead and bridged this uh, set of receivers as well, which makes it super, super rigid. Now, I'm changing the uh, stock mounting. I originally had... Uh, uh, buffer tube adapter and uh, had it printed with the um, plastic stock attachment method. This time we're going with the wood stock attachment method. I think it'll be a lot stronger. And this plate you see here is also sourced by Ron. Ron makes these. They're fantastic. They can work for a wood stock or it can work for this buffer tube adapter. So I'm going to cover that in another video.
But the point here is the bridging of the receiver. So again, this is a 1977. You can see where I've had to dremel out uh, around the breech because the 1977's valve body is larger in the breech area than, say for instance, this, this 880. This is an older 880 valve body, so the receiver has can close and, and don't require modification for it. But for the new style 880s or the 1977s, to utilize a metal receiver, you're going to have to clearance uh, around this breech area. It's not very hard to do. You can take a Dremel tool with like a die grinder head and just slowly take away a little bit of material, fit it to the valve body, and just slowly remove material as required until you can get uh, your metal receivers to clamp around your uh, late model 880 or 1977 valve body. And why would you want to upgrade to a metal valve body? Uh, in addition to its metal and it feels better, the quality seems higher, and uh, it seems more like a real gun using the metal receivers, but they're, they're obviously more rigid. And once you add these uh, bridging, bridges to the front and the back of the receiver, it's extremely rigid, extremely solid. It's very nice. So that, that's how we do it for the 880s and 1977s. For other guns, this also works for, say, for instance, an 822. But uh, 822s have a heavy barrel that's turned down on either end for the breech and the front side insert. So because the barrel diameter is larger, we, we can't use these same aluminum standoffs on the front of the receiver. It works just the same as we demonstrated for the 880s and the 1977s on the rear portion of the receiver. But that larger diameter standoff won't clear the, the heavier, the larger diameter barrel on an 822. So what we have to do is source, I source these, it's, a, it's called a rivet nut. It's basically uh, a nut with like, it looks like a rivet and it's threaded for three millimeter as well. So what we do with it is we, we follow the exact same procedure only instead of having the larger diameter standoff cross the barrel, we just have the three millimeter bolt or yeah, bolt crossing the barrel. And we have to make sure that we drill uh, with the receiver uh, assembled to the bow body frame and barrel assembly when we do that drilling so that you make sure you clear the barrel uh, in the height. So that, that's gonna require that the bridge screw be placed very high on the receiver to clear that heavier barrel again on the 822s. And for it, this uh, rivet nut is four millimeter outside diameter on the shank. So the first hole you drill will be for the four millimeter uh, rivet screw. Once you do that, the process is exactly the same. You put the two receiver halves together, you line up your hole. You, you need to make sure that you drill very straight. If you angle the drill bit in, especially if you're angling it lower in the receiver, when you go to assemble it, you're gonna have interference between that bolt in the barrel before it reaches this uh, rivet nut and it's not going to go together. You've got to drill that very straight. If you err in any direction, you want to err toward the high side of the receiver uh, so that you're clearing the barrel. With that being said, this is how uh, we do this modification. It's going to help maintain your point of impact over time. It's going to make the gun much more rigid it's also going to make the gun more durable as far as it getting bang, bounce, pushed, lean against the wall. Uh, in a hunting situation, if you have it laid across your lap and your arm's resting on it, you're less likely to tweak this uh, right side receiver to the point where it's going to cause a point of impact shift. Uh, I'm talking from experience. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. Uh, so I actually can't claim credit for this modification. I saw somebody else do it on uh, GTA form and some of the old threads and thought you know that's a fantastic idea let's see how we can do that and uh, I sourced the parts the links to the parts will be in the comments below the video and hope this helps you guys I know I'm extremely happy with it and it certainly helped my rifles maintain the point of impact over time thanks guys see you later